A function m file is essentially an m file that creates an entirely new function. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you by example. I created this simple. Oops, I meant to clear all this off. That's a uh, test <laughs> testing stuff. So I created this simple function called um, poly test poly dot m. Um, it takes just a simple input and puts it into this polynomial that I've typed out here. So I'll go ahead and do some some tests of that. So if I do test poly zero, that should give us back one. Test poly four gives us back twenty five. Test poly five gives us back thirty six. So it just takes this simple input and puts it into here. Now let's go ahead and look at the anatomy of the function file, and then we'll create a whole new one. Uh, now the anatomy of a function file is the same in FreeMAT, Octave, and MATLAB. It doesn't change. If you're used to Maxima, like I was when I started using this, it's pretty different. <laughs> and I personally had a pretty hard time adjusting to it because I was so used to Maxima. But once you get used to it, it's actually not hard at all. And it's not really complicated at all. The first thing you do when you create a function in file is type in, you guessed it, function. Uh, this just tells FreeMAT or Octave what kind of M file it is. If I remember right, there are actually more than just these two types of M files, scripts and functions, but uh, we're only going to be talking about these two particular kinds. Now, after typing function, it probably doesn't matter if you put a space here, but um, I go ahead and do that because I feel like it makes it easier to see what I'm doing. And then I put an open bracket, not parentheses bracket, then you put the output variable. Whatever value is assigned to this variable will be the output of the uh, function. So that means this y is, is assigned to this value and this y is the output. So let's see what happens when I put z equals uh, x plus 2 here. And try this again. Test poly 5. So the value of z is doesn't go anywhere. It's not even. It's just. It's not output anywhere. But if I change this y to a z and save the file, don't forget to save the fire file, or else FreeMAT won't know that it's changed. Now it changes it to seven because now the output is set to z rather than y. And you could also do multiple values for outputs. Then I'll have a b equals uh, test poly 5 now it gives me both uh, 36 and 7 so that means that just this is going to be what you want to be output so um, I want to make sure I don't <laughs> I have a script over here I don't want to lose my place uh, so the y is about the y is assigned the value of the polynomial, and y is given uh, is the given output in the terminal right here. So this is always going to be your, your given output. Um, now going back up to this top line, um, after we close brackets, remember it can't be parentheses; it has to be brackets. We put an equal sign, and now we have the name of the function. Now the name of the function needs to be the same thing as the name of the m file. So I have test poly of x. This is going to be test poly dot m. Those two have to be the same, or else you'll confuse free matter octave. Um, now MATLAB will automatically change, will automatically name this test poly. You could change it if you want to, but I don't know why you'd want to. Um, but octave, obviously, octave doesn't even have its own native editor. And FreeMAT will not automatically tell you what values those are going to be. Uh, what 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 value? Well, I say value. Um, what the name of the file is going to be. So you need to go ahead and make sure you have the right name. And if you change this, then you need to also change this. And that can be kind of tedious, but you have to do that. Uh, after the function name, uh, I put my inputs my in this case just one input in parentheses. Just like I can have more than one output, I can also have more than one input. 
You can also have a uh, variable number of inputs and outputs using commands called uh, in arg in, so that looks like this in arg in and uh, in arg out. But those two commands are beyond the scope of this video, so video series. So I'm not going to go into that. I'll be honest; I don't even know how to use them because <laughs> I've never took the time to learn how to use them. Now. Um, Notice that there are spaces here. That's primarily for organizational purposes. If I took the spaces out, it would not affect the way the function works. Um, now, FreeMAT automatically puts this indentation here. Um, I think I missed one. Yeah, I did miss one. So FreeMAT automatically puts this indentation here, but um, some editors, in fact, probably most editors won't. It will not affect MATLAB will, I think. Uh, it will not affect the way it functions, it's just so that you can see it more easily. So, notice that I put a semicolon right here at the end of this line. Because I only want the output that I have defined up here. This will not, um, if I put this semicolon, it puts an extra, if, if, sorry, if I leave out the semicolon, let's go ahead and just see what that looks like, it will leave off an extra put in an extra output that I don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and clear off all the variables. So if I put in the semicolon, it only returns one answer. Now let's notice one more thing before we make a new function. The m file assigned y to this file to this value. But that doesn't val the value y doesn't appear anywhere in this variable list. And if I type in whose, I don't get y. I get an a and s, but I don't get a y. That's because of a feature uh, of function m files that I think is called protected variables. And this is also something that's the same in FreeMAT, Octave, and MATLAB. Uh, that means that currently existing s assignments will not affect any variables in the function and the function won't overwrite any existing assignments. That's pretty convenient because, it's, and it's something that I actually wish that Maxima did because when I'm writing Maxima functions I'm constantly using variables like Q92, something that I know I would not otherwise use my maxima, in my Maxima functions just to make sure that I don't accidentally overwrite something. That also means though that um, you would better make sure that all the information that you want to output is going to be in this output box. Okay. Now let's make a new function. So we'll go ahead and create a new function here. So I'll type in function, and then I'm going to have z, comma w equals test poly two x y. I'll go ahead and put in some spaces. Doesn't really matter, but doesn't hurt either. Uh, so now I, this is called test poly two. I'm going to go ahead and create. I see that very well. Test poly 2.m. So now let's have, and notice that that FreeMAT automatically indented for me. Z equals x squared minus y squared plus 2 times x plus 1, semicolon. W, oop, that's Q. W equals 2 times x times y plus 2 times y. Now if I did this correctly, um, let's do test poly 2 and 3. Uh, let's see, I did something wrong. Too many in, ooh! So I have z w equals test poly 2, 3. What did I do wrong here? Whoops! Typo right there. That needs to be plus. Still did something wrong. What did I do wrong here? Ah, test poly 2. There we go. I was putting it, doing the original test poly by mistake. So test poly 2 of 2 and 3. You know what, I'm going to make that a 4 and 3 just so I don't get confused there. So z is 16 and w is 30. So, um, now that I've created it, 
and it's in the right directory, I can go ahead and use this function just like it's any other freemat function. Uh, so it's it's freemat just recognize it. That's a function. All I have to do is be in the right directory, and it works just fine. It's it's really that easy. So I want to go ahead and point something out that if I did this correctly, oops, then this should be the same thing. 16 plus 30. So this this is just kind of a uh, if I remember correctly, if I remember my um, complex analysis correctly, this is these are both called harmonic functions. This is the real part, and this is the imaginary part of this function whenever this is complex valued. So that's why you get 16, 30 here, 16, and 30 here. So this is, is just a function that maps uh, R2 to R2, which is more or less the same thing as a complex function. Uh, kind of more or less the same thing as a complex function. Let me be a little bit careful when I say it that way. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go back to this first function again, test poly. I'll go ahead and close this. And um, let's say that I want to use this with a list. So I'll just have a list. You know, I'll just say x is equal to... First, I'm going to clear everything off. So x is equal to um, 1, and let's say in steps of 1, 2, 10. So we have x is 1 through 10. And let's say I want to go ahead and do test poly on x. Well, it gives me an error. Why does it give me an error? It says right here, power operator can only be applied to scalar or square arguments. And that's the problem, because this is technically a, uh, you can think of it as a row vector, or you can think of it as just a um, um, 1 by 10 matrix. Uh, let's see, yeah, 1 row, 10 columns. I always get that mixed up. Um, so the problem is that it, it can't, I, I want to perform all this operation on all of these all at once. So what I need to do is I need to go back up to this and change this from square to point square. And this from times to point, I'm, I'm not saying it right, point times. It, but remember that to change this to a, um, a component-wise operation, you put a period before every operation, period before the power, period before the times. And once again, don't forget to save the M file or else FreeMAT won't know that some, anything's different. So now I'll do test poly of x, work just fine. x squared plus 2x plus 1 for every individual one. I could also do the same thing for um, test poly 2 if I wanted to. And before I close this video, I do want to say that uh, to keep these examples simple, I kept the arguments to be real and complex valued numbers, but uh, there's no reason why you can't make functions for vectors and matrices as well. And in fact, we'll see some more complicated functions as we go on. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.